So you can fast for different reasons. So when would I want autophagy? I would want autophagy, one, just to live longer. Number two, let me tell you something. If you do a seven-day water fast, the studies done in Boston at the university show that your lifetime probability of getting cancer is reduced by more than 70%. Some studies even higher. Because the cells that are going to die off in the state of the fast are going to be your cancer cells. Because your cancer cells, look, if I want to do a PET scan on you, I'm going to give you uh, radioactive material. It's got glucose in it. Well, <laughs> excuse me, the glucose is really low. And the insulin level is really low, so the nutrients that the cancer cells want are not there. Cancer cells do die off. So let's talk about cancer for a second. So the studies have been done. And if you fast a person only for 36 hours, that's it and then give them chemotherapy in that state. They're going to tolerate the chemotherapy better. They're going to have less side effects from the chemotherapy. There's going to be death of cancer cells and your normal cells are more resilient now. And you're going to get less death of your normal cells. Do you understand what I'm saying? So what happens when you're fasting, your normal cells become more resilient. So when you give the chemo, only the weak guys die, which is the cancer cells. Because you've strengthened through this fasting process your normal cells. So I wanted to do this protocol upstairs in, in the bone marrow unit where we do a lot of chemotherapy on these patients. But no, nobody said, okay, we want to do this project. They said it would be inhumane to tell our patients to fast before we give them chemotherapy. So what we do, we feed them, then they get nauseated, then they vomit, so we give them Zofran, and then, we, then they will still don't do that, so then we'll put TPN on them. Because we've all been indoctrinated that we have to feed, 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 feed. I'm just telling you all right now, if any of you get a myocardial infarction, you get admitted to the hospital, I'm making you an NPO. I'll put IV fluids on you, but I'll, give you, I'll make you NPO. So even if you do vomit, you're not going to aspirate. You know how much aspiration we see in the hospital over here? And pneumonia and all that from aspiration? It's terrible, because I'm force feeding you in a sense. Wait a second, your body is not hungry, don't eat. But no, the trays get bored to you, you have to eat. You don't have to eat. If you, there's a reason why you have anorexia when you're sick. Pay attention to your body. Your body's telling you don't eat, then don't eat. You won't die. You might die from eating. <laughs> so, cancer. I predict that in the next five to ten years, there's going to be major cancer treatments associated with adjunctive fasting. And that's coming, definitely. It's on its way. What else can be used for? Autoimmune diseases. There's numerous studies to say that you have inflammatory bowel disease, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, any of these conditions, and you get a flare-up of it, fast for three days. It's the most potent thing you can do as an anti-inflammatory. Because first and foremost, your bowels are totally quiet. There's no energy being used for digestion. Your body's energy resources will be utilized to repair yourself. A lot of autoimmune diseases start from your gut as well. Gives your gut a chance to heal so that you get less leaky gut syndrome. So that that fast actually heals, it gives your gut a chance to heal as well. Autoimmune diseases get better. Then what about diabetes? Diabetes definitely gets better because I just told you the insulin resistance gets better. So that gets better. What about Alzheimer's? Oh yeah, you know, poor granny, we can't pull the tray away from her. But sometimes that's the best thing you could actually do. Give her lots of liquids and don't feed granny for three days if she's got <laughs> dementia. <laughs> Social services will be after you. <laughs> it could be anybody, not just the granny. But don't feed her for three days. Just give her lots of water. I promise you, neurologically, She'll start waking up, the fog will go away, the confusion will get better. It can get better, and it should get better. And there's no harm in trying, because she won't die in three days. <laughs> so three-day water fast. So what do I mean by the water fast? Three-day water fast. That means you can only drink water for three days. So drink lots of water. Now, why do you need to drink so much water? Because all reactions occur in water. And secondly, you pee a lot when you're fasting. But I'm not drinking that much. I'm not eating. And how come I'm peeing so much? 
It's because when your insulin levels go down, insulin holds on to water, now there's no more insulin, so that water gets diuresed out of your body. So you will notice that you pee a lot, so you need to drink more when you're fasting. That's number one. Now what about electrolytes? Well, electrolytes will be conserved by your kidneys. Your kidneys are very good at holding on to electrolytes. So there's plenty of electrolytes in the body. Do you know that if I have sodium, if I don't take in sodium, the last molecule of sodium will be reabsorbed by my kidneys. Not a single molecule will be in my urine. That's how good it is. So the kidneys will take care of everything. The kidneys will not allow you to lose sodium or potassium. Now, if you're already starting out with a half empty plate, yeah, you may get some depletion, but you can get that tested. And on refeeding, you, I'll give you some clues on how to improve that when you refeed yourself. But it's unusual to get electrolyte imbalance. But if you do get it, take a pinch of salt in the water, and you'll find that your cramps get better, and your dizziness gets better, and your headaches get better. So these are complaints that a lot of patients have that, oh, you know, I was fasting, but my, after about 15 hours, I had a bad headache. Well, go and drink more water with a little bit of salt in it and put Himalayan salt because that also has some magnesium and other things in it. And you'll feel a lot better. Dizziness is usually due to low blood pressure because your blood pressure comes down. So you get dizzy when you're fasting. It's not because your sugar's down. It's because your blood pressure's lower. Drink water. And cramps. Some patient gets cramps, put the salt again. And also in the evening, put yourself in a tub of, of Epsom salts. Or you can get some magnesium, and there's, there's a liquid magnesium you can just put on your skin, you can spray it, and that'll give you magnesium. And that's what it's all about. So give yourself salt, some magnesium, you'll start feeling better. Patients say that, oh, I get so hungry. Well, hunger comes and goes. There's a ghrelin increase and decrease according to the circadian cycle. So all you have to do is pay attention. Yes, I'm hungry. All right, drink some water. Expand your stomach and you'll feel better. Half an hour later, the hunger's gone. Keep your mind busy. Get going. Do something. Have your chores. Get, get them done. Your hunger will go away. Patients don't continue to be hungry all day long. It just doesn't happen.